Okay. I just did this, but it was not close enough for my liking. So we're doing it again. It's real hot in here. So let's, let's just do it. This is the Jumble Dance Tarot. And I'm just flipping through so you can see the artwork. And I will also be reading from the guidebook some of the images that she used. This is a collage deck by Alexandra Ganetti. And it was originally created in 1998. Here we go. <laughs> so this is The Fool. The central image is from the painting The Prodigal Son by Hieronymus Bosch from 1500. And in the, the book is great. It has like... You know, the fool travels in a darkened early morning desert. Symbolically, the desert represents a lonely challenge. It's like, yeah, very good. Very good book. The magician is from an alchemical text. And then she also says what the alchemical text is at the bottom. And it's of Hermes slash Mercury. The high priestess is a picture of an Arabic woman from an older issue of National Ge Geographic. And we know who this is. This is a figure of the Madonna. There's a little bunny rabbit and some roses. This is Aztec history. And behind him, it says, drawn from the Western symbol and from Aztec history. It has, like, the Aztec king's costume. Behind him is the arched entrance to St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice. The Hierophant is a... Tibetan Buddhist religious leader. The lovers are from Masolino's fresco of the temptation of Adam and Eve. It says the fresco is in Branchak. My Italian roots are not showing. Uh, it's a church of Santa Maria del Carmine in Firenze, Italia. The chariot has three horses red, white, and black, in honor of the triple goddess to which the horse is sacred. The figure of the man is from Raphael's famous painting, Madonna del Granduca, which is also the painting from the Empress card. Strength is a tall woman. <laughs> it doesn't really say anything about the art. This is a Tibetan monk. This is from an alchemical text, the image of the planet in the zodiac. I don't know if I'm going too fast. I'm so sorry. I'm just, <laughs> it's just warm. Justice is, the central image is from the Bune altarpiece by Roger von der Weyden. And it shows Archangel Michael weighing human souls at the last judgment. It also talks about... Egyptian mythology and Ma'at. The Hanged Man is from William Blake's um, drawing for Milton's Paradise Lost, which she then hand covered. The background is one of the awesome flower paintings of Georgia O'Keeffe. The image inside of the flower, shaped like a yoni, provided the perfect womb for the Hanged Man's journey back to his origins. So cool. Death. Um, a medieval image of the skeleton of death and then in the background all the skeletons it's the image from it's from the painting called the triumph of death by Bruegel such a Philist philistine philistine <laughs> philistine <laughs> don't even know the word um, the, t the jumble dance figure for temperance came from a free book I received at an airport handed out by the Hare Krishna group in the 1970s. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and it doesn't really say anything about where this one is from, but it talks about the, all the plants and things that are depicted and used. The tower is, um, the tower image is from... An advertisement for holidays in Spain, the castle of Alcazar in Segovia, where King Ferdinand of Aragon met Isabella of Castile. The falling people are from the Bruegel painting, The Triumph of Death, that was also used in the death card. So cool. The star doesn't say anything about who she is, but she's beautiful. This is where I got to before when I was like, oh no, it's not close enough. <laughs> you can't see how amazing this is. 
um, the moon, rainbow bridge across Glen Canyon in Utah is the main image. Right here. The sun, the little boy in the little the little boys in the image are from a Dover clip art book. This card is in tribute to the late Brian Williams, a Renaissance scholar and creator of several tarot decks. Love. Judgment. This is from the Bune altarpiece by Roger van der Weyden, which I mispronounced earlier. <laughs> the figures are from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel fresco of Judgment Day, except for one figure in the left. Rising. That one's from the altarpiece that I said. Um, and then there's, it's really cool, but I'm not going to show you because my hands are really sweaty. Okay. The Venus of Willendorf. Avi. Ace of Cups. <laughs> I love this deck. Oh, it says Ace of Discs. Oh no, now I have to go all over the place. That's okay. We're going to make it work. I'm not moving these out of this order. <laughs> all right. It doesn't say anything about what specifically is in the image but i'll just go two of cups it also doesn't really oh it's um these shells are shaped like a heart and also the fibonacci spiral so sick three of cups four of cups ancient greek cups are the focus of the four of cups they are set against a background of the Mediterranean Sea and a scene of an ancient Greek temple as living architecture. This card speaks to the legacy we get from the Greek culture, the practical application of philosophy, democracy, and mathematics, geometry, to solve human problems. So on. There's more. <laughs> I'm not going to read all of these. There's... We'll be here forever. Five of Cups. Ancient Roman glass jugs, whose patterns remind us of the blue waters of the Mediterranean near where they were made. That's cool. Did I say six? I meant five. Here's the six of cups. Broken china cups litter the face of this card. Chinese bowls is the seven of cups. Symbolize our dreams and imaginings and how we can make these things true and real in our world. I just want to... I said it enough maybe, but the descriptions in the, the book are quite long. I'm just reading like a little bit of it. The Eight of Cups. The Nine. The image of glasses comes from a 1960s advertisement in National Geographic. These old images are lovely in collage as their soft colors and diffused lines give collage a painterly feel. Oh, what a beautiful little extra tidbit. Ten of Cups. And it's, I have these messed up. I'm so sorry. Hold on. It's the Boy of Cups. <laughs> I didn't look to see how they were ordered in the book. Boy of Cups is the Holy Grail. Girl of Cups is someone milking her beloved cow. Very cute. And then it's man, not woman. Wow, Meg, you're... <laughs> That's really funny that I, based on my previous tarot training, I would have assumed that it was the other way. <laughs> okay, Girl of Cups. I said that. Man of Cups. Um, a medieval painting depicting the banquet of Ahasuerus based on the account in the Book of Esther, likely by Henning von der Heide in 1496. The Woman of Cups. Wow. That... We have to do that every for every suit now. <laughs> I'm not going to edit. <laughs> Wait, I have to edit. I'll change them. Okay. Um, let's see. The Tibetans use would use the word enlightenment and believe the mandala at the center of this image was a tool guiding people on the path to liberation. Two of discs. work 
four of discs is some bread. It's four loaves of bread are the four discs in this card. The four of discs is a card of completion and production. In this card, we see the grain in the background and the bread and beer symbolizing the work process that took place in the three of discs, finished now and turned into food and drink. Five of discs. Six. Time flies. That's what it says. Seven of discs. Spare change. <laughs> what this one says. Nine of discs. Every element in the world, every element in your body, every atom of iron, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, every atom in the vast universe was created in the depth of stars through nova and supernova. The discs shown here illustrate the process a star goes through to create and then expel the elements into space, where they go on to create new stars, planets, oceans, the earth, and living beings. All things are present in the ten, and all things go on to create new things. Just as the elements are cycled and recycled through stars, objects like fabric, paint, and wood are recycled through human creativity to make new and useful things. Keep the circle unbroken. Boy of Discs. Girl of Discs. Man of Discs. He's a creator, an artist who uses the earth in his palette, as his palette, making beautiful sculptures of horses and other animals from rocks. He also makes paints from many colored soils to decorate his pots with nature motifs. Woman of Discs. A woman offers plants of seeds to the world. The original photograph from National Geographic was of a large city square where this Turkish woman was selling dishes of bird seed to feed the local pigeons. Very cute. Okay, wands. This card is a tribute to Stevie Postman and the Cosmic Tribe Tarot. Tarot. Wow. It's so cool. Two of wands. Three of wands. Four of wands. Burnout. Five of Wands. Deep imagination from which our ideas are born. Six of Wands. There's a bunch of dorgies on here. I see that. Tibetan dorgies are thunderbolts meant to symbolize the connection between the sky and earth or between seen and unseen. And there's also a Buddhist meditation chant mantra here as well very like this book is really good this deck is very good the book is very good seven of wands eight nine it says behind the palms a fiery couple embraces against a background of bright orange roses aphrodite's flower Ten of Wands. Outside the world is a flame. Inside, floating candles light the space. In the forest, the fire brings immediate destruction and the satin black of scorched trees. It looks as though it is dead and broken forever. Inside, the candles speak to a renewal of spirit and of a higher creativity. New energy rises above the old and reaches ever higher. The forest floor is also renewed over time as the pine cones open and their seeds spring to life. New green plants, grasses, and tiny trees emerge in the fire-swept landscape very quickly after a fire. We feel the, renew the renewal so deeply, life moves forward. Boy of Wands. Girl of Wands.
The lovely image of a young Mexican girl at her first communion inspired this girl of Juan's card. First communion in Catholicism is the ritual in which we are first aware of the responsibility we have for our actions. First communion at the age of eight, young Catholics make their first confession and in a sense take on the first responsibilities of personhood. Here the child first receives the Eucharist and takes on the challenge of faith. Dressed in white, the girls are symbolically dressed to reflect purity. The card represents the newly awakened human being who searches for meaning in ritual and in life. It is the spirit yearning for connection with the vast universe and for connection with others and community. Man of Wands. Woman of Wands. And Swords. Ace of Swords. There's a creation story depicted here. Two of Swords. Three of Swords. Four of Swords. Five of Swords. Six of Swords. The six mirrors are six mirrors the four in my watercolor Wheel of Change tarot. Seven of Swords. I'm just a fan now. It really is a good good deck if you like collage decks. I wasn't like stoked about the font at first. Sorry, they've been falling a little bit. Um, but now I totally like it. Nine of Swords. Oops. Almost done. Boy. Oh, ten of swords. My bad. Boy of swords. There's a little blue jay. Girl of swords. This is one of my favorite. It's so pretty. It's one of my favorite cards. Striding into view, the girl of swords is on her way, <laughs> exclamation point. Wearing a beautiful dress and bright ribbon, she is ready to meet the world at her best. She's armed with sharp and colorful ideas represented by the crystals, some cut into fantastic jewels. Her ideas take shape just as these raw crystals can be cut into jewels to reflect light in special ways. Like a diamond, her ability to think critically and to cut through dogmatic ideas serves her growing, expanding mind. Creativity of thinking is her ally, and she push pushes forward like the rainbow arches through the sky. Yes. Goals. Okay. Man of Swords. <laughs> Woman of Swords. The Woman of Swords is a card of mystical transcendence and the knowledge that comes with advanced age. The beautiful old woman, dressed just as she has since she was young, has seen and understood the patterns of life that are mirrored in the rose window of Notre Dame. She is like the Holy Spirit floating above her, ethereal and blessed. Her thoughts hover all over, hover over all she knows, connecting them in her deep memory. She is like the moth who flies close to the light of the worlds beyond. This is the wisdom we hope to attain before we die, to hold the thread that connects our past to our descendants' future. And some of the pages have like these little symbols at the bottom. Like this one was here for the for the girl of swords. Anyway, you guys, that's the deck. What do you think? I love it. Um, I've had it for several months now. And I know that I mentioned it or showed it. And Mariana Moss Books asked for me to do this. And I'm just getting around to it. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful and interesting. And let me know. Okay, bye.